What's up, Prime Fam? We got the tripod out. We got the incline bench press set up, and we're gonna take you guys through my pump day. So this is the funnest day on program for me right now. Uh, if you guys are interested in today's workout too, you can find it in our Fusion program, available in the description box down below. I'm running our power building template this training season, and it's a fun program. And in today's workout, we're gonna walk you guys through all these exercises. I got them up here on my phone. I'll be reading off today's training day in order in a second. Um, we got the pump cover on too, by the way, not sponsored by Gymshark. I don't have a sponsor, but digging this, these baggy t-shirts. I've always been against pump covers, by the way. Um, if you guys have seen any of my previous videos, you know I love to train shirtless. And this is because I work really hard for my body. I am in the gym all the time. This is my entire life, and so I wanna see my body whenever I'm training but I'm trying to step into that identity, kind of something I was talking about in the previous videos of being a bigger guy and big guys wear baggy shit, especially pump covers. And then they kind of unveil the physique once they got the pump going on. So I'm trying to step into that energy a little bit. Uh, we're gonna walk you guys through uh, each exercise today, but before we do that, just to overview what we're training today, we got incline bench press up first here, which about to load up here on the barbell. We have ascending sets with descending repetition ranges. So what this is amazing for is getting in a lot of good accumulated volume and decently heavy sets. So normally in a lot of workout paradigms, you might see one top set followed by lighter back downs. What this will actually do is get you a few working sets that will be heavier than those back downs would have been but then maybe your top set's a little bit compromised because you're slightly pre-exhausted. However, if you design the repetition range correctly, it won't pre-exhaust you too badly. And I actually find this is a great way to get in more quality volume oftentimes than doing the more traditional top set with back downs. That's not always the case, but in today's case, that's how we're running it. We're doing dumbbell bench press after the incline bench press. Um, we'll kind of take you guys through that as well and explain some of the nuances there of why I'm going so light on that exercise currently. It's actually not because of the shoulder rehab. Uh, I am still rehabbing the shoulder, but this day actually feels very pain free because these movements don't hurt me. So we'll take you through the semantics of why I'm going so light on those later. And then we're gonna take you guys basically through a ton of cable flies, dumbbell skull crushers, just a ton of arm work. Today is a pump day. And so if you're interested in this program, I'm running this pretty much directly from our Fusion program, which is our power building program that's available in the description box down below. Um, it's only $45 a month and you guys can sign up and get access to all the awesome content we're always dropping on the website. Since I have moved, I've been putting out one to two videos a week on the website as well as our weekly Q&A. So there's so much content coming there. Um, but without further ado, it's time to train. It's time to do some incline bench press. Let's load it up. All right, about to take the top set here. We got 275 loaded, going for three clean paused reps. Now, um, this is not my best on incline, but if I do this at the RP I'm aiming for, it'll be an ability PR, um, actually a lifetime ability PR, which is insane because the shoulder doesn't hurt on incline. So when I'm doing it on here, I can just push full exertion. So I know as soon as I get my flat back, it'll be way different. I've done 315 for four reps, but, uh, or maybe it was five, so I can't remember, but that was done touch and go, and I was actually at a heavier body weight. So this is very, very different doing these paws and really clean reps. Let me get a song. Ah! Easy too, boy. Ah. Okay, so incline bench went really, really good. Um, did ascending sets. I think I hit, God, don't quote me on this, 215 for 10, 235 for seven, then 255 for five, and then 275 for a triple, all paused. Now, you'll notice there, normally if I would have done a top set, I probably would have done just 275 for maybe another rep because I am using rep ranges. Each rep range had a scale of two reps, uh, or three I guess you could say. So for instance, when I hit that set of um, five, the repetition range was five to seven. Last week I did a set of six on this day, and so this week I bumped the load a good bit by almost, I think 10 or 12 and a half pounds, I can't remember. But anyway, the point is, is like because of the larger uh, load increase, I dropped the rep by one to make sure I stick at the RP that's listed. 
This is really the key with the sending sets. If you overshoot it, it's gonna be horrible for the outcome of adaptation. But if you can check the ego and do these correctly, I almost feel stronger by the time I get to that final working set because like you feel so in groove on the mo movement, but you don't feel fatigued because it's not like you've done an all out like legit top set. So um, normally I would have done like 275 and then back down to like 225. So the majority of my sets would have been actually significantly lighter than some of those ascending sets. So you gotta, you gotta pick and choose if you wanna do top sets or if you wanna go ascending or straight sets. Many ways to skin the cat, guys. Uh, moving on to some dumbbell bench here. My goal with these is purely to get some really good chest contractions, okay? So I'm probably gonna do these sets like after I'm done talking and I'll splice them on the screen while I'm talking right now. But the, the goal here is I've done 150s pause before for sets of five. Um, and I've done the 120s for sets of 10 to 12, paused. These I'm going for 15, sets of 15, with all the tension going to my chest. So it's really easy to do these from point A to point B. It's really difficult to do these while mostly using chest. Okay, so my goal here is to bring up my pecs, which are really my weakest point in my bench press as well as my physique. My triceps are in a close second behind it, so I'm just not much of an upper body presser. That's just never been my strong point. But these, I'm trying to get a lot stronger um, and really, again, emphasize all the tension in the chest. So, gonna hit a set here, or actually a few sets. We got straight sets, and then we got a ton of shoulder and arm work. Or rather, actually, I think it's almost all, I take that back, it's only a little bit of chest after this, and then a ton of arms, because I'm trying to make these arms juicy, boy. Damn, we're gonna do some cable flies now. So real quick, on that dumbbell bench, holy shit. So timed rest intervals, I wasn't even timing them that strict, but they're about, about three minutes or so. Uh, and that wasn't on program, I just wanted to do that because I knew it would keep me in check. Sure enough, that third set on the 12th rep, I just died out. The first set of 15 felt like RP five or six. Like it felt easy, it felt like I could get 20 reps. And then by reps, or set two, I was at probably RP eight to nine, and then by that last one, I only got 12 reps. So you can die out really quick when you're training more of those metabolic properties, that cellular swelling and some of that other stuff. Sorry if you guys hear the uh, construction going on in the background. Anyway, cable flies here. We're gonna make this short and sweet. Okay, sometimes I do these really bent arm, other times I'm a little bit more out here. Today we're gonna go bent arm, keep the tension mostly on the pecs, because when you're out here, it's gonna be a little bit more shoulder and bicep, which is actually okay. That's a really great way to train, not just the pecs, but that humorous adduction and having healthy shoulders and opening up your scapula, amazing for it. So don't get reductionist and think everything is about uh, isolating your pecs when you're training you know, a pec fly or something like that. But in today's case, I do wanna isolate. We're gonna keep arms in here a little bit more. And then I'm trying to focus on bringing biceps together. So not flying, not hugging a tree like some people say, but more squeezing pecs and biceps together, almost like I'm trying to make my titties touch. You know what I mean? Like I'm wearing a little push up or something. <laughs> trying to make the biceps come together. So you see how I'm doing those? It's a little less of a fly and just really focusing on a hug and a squeeze of the arms together. Oh man, I died out quick. Whew, I think holding him in that stretch position was killing me out. So we got three sets here. Um, I was supposed to actually do more reps than that. I was supposed to hit 15, but I was really underestimating those. So we're gonna do those, and then we got some arms. Okay guys, so we got dumbbell skull crutchers here. Sorry, I got the music loud right now because I'm enjoying the workout. Um, goal here is decently strict. So I got 45s here on these adjustables. Um, you know, I've done similar stuff much heavier, but with more shoulder movement. So I'm gonna go decently strict, not overly strict here. Really focus on lockout pressing through. 
This will really help out your bench press and that kind of bottom lateral portion of the triceps. This is really, really good to get that sweep of the arms. You're gonna notice a little elbow flare here too. That's purposeful, that is not cheating. It's gonna target a different portion of the triceps. Let's go. All right guys, sorry, my neighbor's doing some lawn care over there, but Mike's a good guy, so we're not gonna give him grief about it. How dare he interrupt my YouTube video. Anyway guys, we're gonna do some hammer curls here. So let me, let me discuss this real quick, guys. Hammer curls are an amazing exercise for anyone who has shitty tricep attachments like me. Like what happens if you don't have a lot of lateral sweep down here, like, like if you look at my triceps, you see how it's just really flat at the bottom of my arm? So I got these long humerus, bones, right? And what's the plural form of humerus, by the way? Is it humeri or humeruses? Humeruses doesn't sound right, so it's gotta be humeri, but I've never heard that. But anyway, my humerus, really long, right? So from here to here, this bone is long. My attachments just suck. So I, I just have this like small looking tricep, and if I had more sweep down here, if my attachments were a little bit lower or my arm bone a little shorter, it would give you that girthier look. But one way to actually fill in that area is training hammer curls, because it's gonna train that brachy and the brachioradialis, which thickens up this whole portion of the arm down here. And so when you're standing in a shirt, it'll give you thicker looking arms, even without that sweeping tricep. So this is an amazing exercise to fill in that gap down there, give you a little bit more girth to the lower arm. And as we know, size matters. Uh, so we're gonna do these here. Gonna go a little heavier. So triceps, I, I, almost, I almost never go less than 10 reps. Mainly because triceps beat my elbows up. Biceps, I never have any pain. I know some guys who have to curl very carefully, otherwise they get a lot of shoulder or bicep pain. I get nothing on my biceps, so I'm the total opposite. I've always had really healthy shoulders, um, but I, I have really shitty elbows and knees and kind of my adductors too. So you gotta know your points, and so on, on triceps, I really never prescribe for myself less than 10 reps. And honestly, even on more advanced clients, I don't either, because your elbows just get really hot from powerlifting. But on bicep work, I'll go a little bit heavier. So these 45s, the first set, I might get more than eight to 10, but after that, they're probably gonna quickly come down. So I'll probably splice the clips in, mostly while I was talking there, but gonna do a set right now. Let me stand facing the camera too. So you're gonna get some bicep activation here. I can't believe I'm talking through the set, but you're also gonna get a ton of that brachioradialis. So look at the side forearm muscle and in between the tricep and bicep attachment at the elbow, that's what's gonna get lit up. I'll stand from this side too, because you can see it here. So you see those muscles working? Really good for filling that in. I don't even know how many reps that was. I just went until it was hard. Uh, shouldn't do that though. You should be tracking your reps and sets. I'm um, gonna do two more sets here, and then after that we got more try or more arm work. My damn camera keeps dying. I love this new vlogging camera I bought, but man, the battery life is shit on it. So it's making me question if I ever want to invest in Sony again because I feel like they do that shit on purpose. We got some spider curls. Hopefully the audio is coming out to, uh, or hopefully the audio is coming out good here. Man, guys, look at this mop on the head. The hair is growing. I can't wait till it gets longer. So goal here is to basically get my elbows in front of the body, which is gonna flex the shoulder. Again, sorry for the nose and noise in the background. And this, like I was talking about in my last video, I'm gonna link that video. When your shoulder is flexed during bicep work, it's gonna put you in a position where you're focused on the contracted state. So you're gonna get a better squeeze. You're gonna train more cellular um, uh, hydration and pump, basically. Your, your arms are gonna get a bigger pump. You're gonna get more metabolic fatigue. Uh, I said cellular hydration, rather cellular swelling. Okay, metabolic fatigue, contraction, peak contraction, 
Um, but you're gonna get less eccentric loading, especially at the lowest portion of the bicep, AK where it's most stretched. And that's partially due to the physics of this exercise, but also partially due to the fact your shoulder is in a flexed position. So again, go watch my video, but it has very little to do with training your long versus short head of the biceps, depending on where your shoulders are. That's what everyone always talks about. It's more about training either the eccentric and the stretched position and more eccentric stress, or the contracted positions, or a neutral position for overload. So, we're gonna go here, spider curl, on an incline, squeeze. So again, this exercise is all about the squeeze. And if you do these right, keeping the elbows and shoulders in front, you'll see you don't get a gnarly stretch here. But Damn, my phone ran out of memory on the last one. I'm failing as a fitness influencer today, guys. So what I was saying is you don't get a gnarly stretch, or excuse me, you don't get much of a stretch, but you get a gnarly pump and squeeze. So again, elbows stay in front, squeeze, okay? I did this as my last set, and this is on short rest, so I'm probably only getting about eight reps here. Okay, finishing up here with cross body cable tricep extensions. I technically have push-ups last, last, but I'm not gonna show those, not gonna discuss those. So these, the shoulder and elbow position is not changing much other than the direction and the angle at which I'm contracting. So what I was speaking about in the previous video, fuck man, hold on. God damn it, Mike. God damn it. No, I'm just kidding. I think Mike's son's, uh, his, one of his son's lifts, and I have a strong feeling one of these days he's gonna find my YouTube channel. Um, so if you're watching this, I don't even know your name, but I love, I love Mike. He's a good guy, but fuck man. Mike's always mowing his goddamn lawn, <laughs> like literally every week. His lawn, lo his lawn looks nice as fuck though. He keeps his house in really good shape. Um, but let's do these now that Mike's done. So, um, what we're going to do here, the angle's changing. So like I was discussing in my previous video, the, the shoulder position being either flexed or extended behind the body will dictate the contracted or stretch state, or neutral is gonna be more for overload exercises. This is not really changing the shoulder position very much, but the angle and articulation at which I contract through is gonna change, and that's gonna change the activation. So what's funny is, this is actually gonna target my lateral head much more than changing my shoulder position in front or behind the body. So it's ironic because the, the way you do actually change the activation of the head has very little to do with the shoulder position and more to do with the angle at which you're contracting. Okay, so we're gonna go right here, elbows out and squeeze. And this is just basic physics. Anyone who says it doesn't work like this, you have to understand the muscles orient in multiple directions. You have fibers going all over the place on most muscle, bo uh, mus most muscle bodies within your anatomical system. So your triceps, your lats, and a few others have a ton of variance to the way the fibers originate and insert throughout the attachment sites. And that's gonna dictate the angle at which you pull um, or contract is going to dictate, you know, which fibers get elicited. So, you know, especially with the lats and triceps, those are two where the angle really matters. Other things like your quads, not quite as much. Your calves, a little bit, but still not quite as much. But pecs, triceps, and lats, those are going to be big ones. But anyway, contracting out here to the side, full flex. And so again, really focus here on going across the body and internally rotating. And you're going to see that lateral head get some good contractions here. You won't feel this a ton in the long head, just a little bit. And that's pretty much the video today, guys. So please comment down below, it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in our group coaching programs, go sign up at the link in the description box down below. Guys, 45 bucks a month. And, and honestly, it really supports the channel. More than anything, the more time I can free up and the less I have to work on other things in order to make a, a living and an income, the more content I can provide you guys. And I'm gonna be starting a really awesome second YouTube channel here soon. So, also, if anyone has counted how many reps I've done on this crossbody tricep extension, leave it down below. Also, question of the day, what is your favorite arm exercise? I wanna know your guys' favorite arm exercise. I'm gonna finish up here and I'll catch you on the next vid.